These training runs seem to be getting earlier and earlier these days, but that's definitely going to be good training for what's to come. The main reason we've started early today is because we're doing a point to point training run. So no out and back on the coast path today. So we've got to drop a few cars off before we make it to the starting location. We've got an awesome route plan for today's training run. And I think we're going to get to do it in some pretty spectacular weather. There's also some very exciting news about two new sponsors to the channel. So I suppose we should get everything packed away and I'll fill you in all about it out on the run. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Now you join me bright and early down in the beautiful little coastal village and fishing port of Coverack, which is actually located on the east side of the Lizard Peninsula. Now if you've followed the channel for any period of time, you might recognise this stunning location because this is where the start line is of the amazing 100 mile foot race, the Arc of Attrition. Now the atmosphere down here come race morning is pretty amazing. You've got drums playing, music blaring out, you've got blue smoke flares going off and it really does get the sort of adrenaline pumping for the challenge ahead. Now over the last few years, I've been capturing the event for the channel, but this year is gonna be very different because we are lining up on the start line. You can probably already tell from the thumbnail of this video that this is the first episode in a short series that we're gonna do following my progression to race day. Got lots of great content planned for that series, but today we're getting out on the first 20 miles of the route. It's a tough section of the route, that's for sure, that we don't run very often, but I've got some company with me today. So let's get back to the adventure bus, let's get kitted up and let's get out on the run. So as we run out of uh, cover, I'll just introduce you to who we've got. So we got John, we all know John, he's with us again. Dee's hiding in the background there. Uh, so Dee is Luke's better half. So we've got Luke up front. I won't turn the camera around because he doesn't like a camera. And we got Rich. Rich Hello. is back on the channel. How are you doing? No Rich cam today, but he's going to be running with us. So come race day, this will be packed full of runners. Lots of nervous faces as people head out on their epic, epic challenge. And John's walking the first hill because he's a sensible boy. And we ran yesterday, so we did the Brown Willie run and pretty challenging conditions. What an epic morning, what an amazing day. And we'll try not to get lost, eh? Funny story, one year myself, Steve and Paul Maskell led the field up the hill and took everybody the wrong way. <laughs> Ended up in a dead end. We'll try not to do that today. So if you're new to the channel or new to the world of ultra running, what is the arc of attrition? Well, it is a very challenging 100 mile foot race down here on the coast path of Cornwall, put on by the brilliant Mud Crew events. The race has been running since, what, 2015, and it's grown into a bit of a beast. So I would say it's probably one of the most competitive winter 100 mile races at the moment in the UK. Always get a stellar field, guys pushing fast at the front, and this year is no different. Strong men's field and a really strong ladies field as well. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see quite a few ladies in the top 10 overall, to be honest. Got some amazing athletes. So out of the group that's running today, we've got four people running. Luke is doing it for the second time. Third. Well, yeah, sorry, third. I was trying to ignore the first one, mate. I didn't want to bring it up. Right. So, um, his history with the races, unfortunately, didn't make it to the finish. First time out, big challenge. It was his first attempt at 100 miles on a very tough route. Second time round, he smashed it, or should I say it smashed him, because unfortunately, he'd been ill and niggles and injuries and hadn't got the training, but he, he still hung on and dug in and got it done, which was amazing. We got Richard, who's somewhere down there. He's run it lots of times. So he's uh, done lots of distance running. He'll be fine. And then last but not least, we got John James. So John's uh, gone about it the sensible way. He obviously 
went up and did the autumn 100, yep. which if you follow the channel, you'd see we were up there giving him a hand, pacing him over the last 25. Great event that was. Yeah, it went really well. Smashed it and giving him lots of confidence for the arc coming up. The downside to John's race is that he's gonna have to spend a hundred miles with me. <laughs> <laughs> Nagging him. He thought 25 miles was bad in the autumn 100. He don't know what he don't know what he's letting himself in for. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is the plan for the race. We're gonna be running together, helping each other out, and making sure that we get it done and get back to that amazing finish at Porth Town. <clears throat> so this is Luke. You'd recognise Luke from our TDS video because you were lurking in the background of that yeah. one when you were trying to lost, mate. trying to keep out of the way of the camera. <laughs> how's uh, how's training gone this year, mate? Better. Better yeah. Previous years, yeah. You've been running strong. Yeah. Feeling just, confident? Yeah, I was a bit of, yeah. Yeah, you've had some good, uh, Hopefully. got some good mileage in. Yeah. A lot better than last year. Yeah. Oh, you'll be fine, mate. Now you've done the distance, you know the route. You're feeling strong, training's gone well. Yeah. It's in the bag, mate. But yeah, what an epic morning we've got. So lucky. The course is looking pretty mega this morning. i turn the camera that way, you can see it. I mean, come on. It's views like this that make the race so special. Also really excited to announce that we've picked up some incredible sponsors for this ARC series. So the first one is a friend of the channel. It's a Phoenix, the lighting specialist. So We've been working with them for years now, reviewing lots of their kit. And the HM65RT is my running head torch of choice. So, you know, we'll only ever sort of partner up with brands that we believe in. And they make some awesome kit, super powerful bright head torches with long burn time and incredible build quality. So it is great to have them on board and it's going to be wicked working with them through this series. The second sponsor is British premium running apparel brand Saw. So quite new to the channel recently, uh, testing out a load of their winter kit. Was super happy with how it performed. Yes, it is pretty pricey, but it is some proper technical running kit. So again, hooking up with them for the ARC series. Uh, we got some amazing kit to run in for the race. Waterproof jackets, we got merino base layers. This lovely waterproof winter gilet. So again, we got some great kit. And you definitely need some great kit for the Arc of Attrition because you never know what it's gonna throw at you. You can literally have all four seasons in one race. So yeah, again, awesome to be working with Saw uh, on the Arc series. It's gonna be great partnering up with them. And they're gonna keep me nice and warm and nice and dry throughout the race. So very different to John then, Rich. You've run the arc several times. Yeah. How are you feeling about it this year? Well, I was, I was getting in pretty good shape. I've had this chest infection. That's yeah, like, like all of us, yeah. It's knocked me out for <laughs> December, but. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. Coming man. back and. Uh, yeah, just feeling just good? Get, yeah, just try and get as much chicken as I can now. You got any goals for the race or just see how it goes, get round? Oh, enjoy. It'd be, nice get, it'd be nice to get a PVB. You don't know what weather you're going to get, so. Yeah, it's hard. If it's, if it's going to be another year of the mud, it'll be slow. Yeah. If it's like last year, it'll be fast, so. So for any first timers out there watching this video that are running it this year, what is your one bit of advice for the Arc of Attrition? Uh, the race really starts around Land's End. Yep. So save it and save the legs so that you can run the flat bit. So run around the harbour, around Manx Bay, and be able to run when you come out of St Ives. Yeah, that is And uh, if you can run when you come out advice. of St Ives, you'll save an hour at least. And also, um, Take plenty of extra drink around the morning as well because it's slightly yeah. tropical around there. It could be freezing cold everywhere else. If yeah. you ever run the classic quarter, you'll know that, that that section of coast is always warm. Even winter, it's so much warmer than the rest of the route. Very still, so you can still need a lot of uh, a lot of fluid intake, even though you're running in the middle of winter. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that. You know, you're still sweating, you're still working hard, so you've got to get them fluids in. 
Top advice, Rich. Top advice. Keep time, mate. Keep time. <sighs> running along wishful thinking wouldn't it be amazing if we had a morning like this for the start of the arc attrition just shows you you never know what you're gonna get although update on the course underfoot conditions it's pretty slippy we've uh we've all had a few slips and slides already and we're what three and a half miles in and you forget how technical and how tough this first section is all the way to the lizard it's pretty tough running and like I said earlier, we just don't run it enough. So it's great to get out here, have a look at it before the big day. If you can, and you're running, I know it's uh, close to the race date, but it's always good to get out on the course if you can. Gives you a real good insight into what's ahead. And it'll show you how challenging it is. But yeah, beautiful morning. I'll try and keep on my feet from now on. I've only had one slip and it was all right. So, like I was saying about underfoot conditions, uh, you can see here, there's been some cows here. So, there is sections on the path where there's cattle and it gets proper chop chopped up. The water obviously sits in it and it gets pretty boggy. Oh, it's the mud crew cows, isn't it? The mud crew cows, yeah. Yeah, mud crew sent a load of cows out here just before the race and ripped the course to shreds. And then, and then Fur gets the old hose pipe out and fills it all up with water. That's our theory on it, anyway. Okay, this is worse than yesterday, John. <laughs> we were on Bodmin Moor yesterday doing the Brown Willie and this is horrendous. So you're not running the Arc D, are you? So what are you training for? Snowdonia. She's, yeah, she's doing UTS. Are you doing the 50K? Yeah. <laughs> UTS 50. So a super challenging mountainous race in Wales. And how are you feeling about UTS? Uh, I think it's going to be really, really tough. Yeah, yeah. But... I want to get him to the UTMB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love. So D came out to Chamonix. Lukey was running the TDS, and you loved it, didn't you? Yeah, it was amazing. She couldn't stop going up in the mountains. It's uh, yeah, it's a magical place, isn't it? So that's your goal, is it, to get in a race out there? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. sounds good to me. John's got his old uh, cheat sticks or poles out, getting some practice in. He's going to be using them in the race. It's quite tricky on the coast path, quite narrow, so it's good to get used to them and they really can help, even though obviously we're in Cornwall, there's no mountains, but there's lots of ups and downs and they can just help you, give you a bit of assistance, a bit of stability, take a bit of pressure on the, off the quads and I'll definitely uh, be using them come race day. And I'll probably have them out from the start, you know. Big mistake a lot of people make is they pull the poles out when they're really starting to struggle. And it's kind of too late then. It's like, you know, taking in nutrition when you're bonking. So I'll be having them out from the start. And uh, personally for me, they make a massive difference. We've even got some wildlife, yeah. wildlife out on yeah, the trails Rich, today. Rich just blends right in with Rich them. is going to jump on the back of it and ride the rest of the 15 miles. The coast path is definitely in all its glory today, that is for sure. Sun out, looking mega. about uh, a mile out from uh, the lizard which again is a awesome point in the race loads of support there so running into lizard is a pretty good feeling great place to meet with your crews to get a top up of water or 
grab some nutrition or just to see a friendly face, it's a good place. So it's gonna be great to be back on the uh, start line this year. Got a bit of history with the race. Definitely a race close to my heart, that's for sure. You know, it's not very often you can get to run a 100 miles foot race on a route that you know so well and that you live so close to. So this race really does mean a lot to me. And like I said, can't wait to get back in the thick of it. So yeah, I lined up for the, uh, the inaugural Arc of Attrition back in 2015. I think there was about 55 runners in total. A lot of us were local. A lot of us were local, so you knew most of the, the guys lining up. And it was just an incredible experience. Be out on that route, we had some uh, pretty amazing conditions. Blue sky and sunshine, believe it or not. But yeah, the atmosphere in the race, the checkpoints, mud crew, just put on an incredible race. And ever since that day, you know, I've always wanted to run the race. I've had a couple of good finishes, sort of. I think I finished in the top five a couple of times. Best time, just managed to scrape under 25 hours one year, 24.50 something. But unfortunately, the last time I took it on, it really didn't go well. I'd be, had a bit of an injury, been ill, hadn't got the training in, so I knew it was gonna be a bit of a tough ride and just pushed way too hard and ended up pulling out at Cock Valley, mildly hypothermic, uh, very dizzy, blurred vision, and I couldn't even talk. I was like stuttering my words and in a right old mess. So got picked up by a crew there and had to, had to pull out of the race, unfortunately. So there's no way we can leave it like that. We have to come back and we have to finish it off this year. So there we have it in the background, the famous lighthouse of the Lizard Point. Quite tricky, the sun's really low, so it's quite hard to see the trails. But yeah, so that's halfway. Made it to halfway in the training run. Like I said, nice little run into Lizard here. Got some really good runnable trails. I've got to be honest, the mileage from the last sort of five days, I think is starting to catch up with me. It's all good. So we had the 15 miles of uh, Jolly Roger a really tough 15 miles. And then we went out and ran the Brown Willie New Year's Day run yesterday. So uh, quite a lot of mileage over the last five days and just feeling it a bit, although I think it's just low in calories. I popped a gel in a while back and I can already feel it kicking in. So it should be good. There we are, Lizard Point. Huh? Cracked it. So I'm all right. in the race, there'll be all crew along here either side of the trail cheering people through and you can see pretty amazing view back there awesome running down the hill where john is coming through here get a big lift and uh onwards and upwards from here got some slightly flatter running coming up can sit quite wet through here though but if you've uh if you've run the classic quarter this is the start line right here so again 10 miles in and now, uh, if you're doing the arc, you'd have to run the classic quarter. So that's how challenging the race is. Don't get much better than that, does it? Look at those views on views. Amazing. You, mate. I've had too much Christmas food. <laughs> I can see you going up that step, them steps. Oh, I was thinking, oh, oh, oh look at you struggling. I'm not having a good day. Good to see you. Can you to get get you. Yeah. I thought it was you two. Yeah, too much, too much Christmas. Oh, here. tell me about it, mate. I'm flagging as well. What have you done it and before? And it's giving me a bit of confidence. You know, you know it's coming. 
But right. today's yeah, got that's the thing, we know it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shh. People will be watching this. It's lovely. Yeah, it's a lovely best race. race. It's best race. Just float cool. along in blissful joy. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure bumping into you, lads. And they're going away. Yeah, yeah. You always good to on, see you. You crack on because. Thanks Herbie. for the support, guys. Thanks for watching the channel. Big supporters of the channel, ZT. Good yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All my Christmas gifts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not as well. Well, if I don't see you before, I will yeah. see you on oh, the start right. line of the arc. Yeah. Have a good one, boys. Yeah, Take care. Coming up to 14 miles in the run. And we've hit the uh, infamous boggy section. This is always a challenging section. And you just can't avoid it. It's so muddy, so wet. The best thing to do is just plow through it. There's no point trying to avoid it. It's impossible. You're going to get wet. You're going to get muddy. And uh, you just have to deal with it. At the end of the day, if you sign up for a winter race, I think mud and tough conditions are going to come into the equation. So, yeah, just got to suck it up. We got me. There she blows. We got Mullion Hotel in the distance. Dropping down to Mullion Cove in a minute, which again is another great highlight in the race. Lots of support down there. Big set of steps going up the other side and then lots of support at the hotel as well. And we ain't got far to go after that. We've nearly cracked it. We're all still together, just about. John's hanging on, digging deep, which is good to see because that's what he's going to have to do in the race. And uh, yeah, let's get down to, get down to Mullion Cove and get up the other side. Last bit of effort, up these steps, and then it is downhill to our cars, which are parked over there. Pole Dew Cafe, here we come. Whoa. Gotta be honest, had to grind a bit on them last two miles. The mileage over the last few days definitely caught up with me. And I don't think I've consumed enough calories. I didn't have any breakfast this morning, but not making excuses, these runs where you have to dig deep and grind it out are the best ones but all right let's get down that hill let's get this run done yeah well done d that was awesome wow, good running you're running strong it's the longest type of run a training run amazing you're strong we are done 20 miles in the bag tough last couple of miles but I'm just staring across a Polju cafe. It looks quite busy, but I don't care. I need a coffee. I need some cake, some substance, anything. Any calories will do. I need them. So uh, <laughs> we're going to get it changed quickly and then we're here in the cafe. Here he is. Well done, mate. Well done. We need to hit that cafe, John, don't we? Oh. I need to uh, massage, that's what I need to do. I ain't doing it. Huh? I ain't doing it. All right, all the uh, race kit is off. <laughs> nice, clean hoodie. We survived it, guys. <laughs> how, you fe how you feeling, Luke? I'm all right, I'm good. You look fresh as a daisy going up <laughs> them steps. I'm, I was very envious as I hobbled up them and you ran up them. Dee, feeling good? Yeah. You ran really well. I'm really well. But 
You did really good. I actually enjoyed huh? it. Yeah, you were strong. I was flagging and you were just running off into the distance. But this is the best bit about running 20 miles is that we're now going to go to the cafe. Well, I am. I'm going to go to the cafe and order everything on the menu. Yeah. Uh, and a very extremely large coffee because that's the, that's the thing that's been sort of keeping me going for the last five miles. And Pole Dew Cafe, again, if you're in Cornwall, pay it a visit. It's a bit of a trek down here, but once you're down here, beautiful Pole Dew Cove and the cafe is mega. How are you feeling, Rich? <laughs> it's now I've nailed my gingerbread latte. What, what have you got here? What I've got you that? a gingerbread Is spice that for me? It's for you, yeah. <laughs> oh, can, I, can I just give you a, I just give you a cuddle? Oh, you're a superstar. You're a superstar. Oh my god. Oh, that's fine, is it? Yeah. Oh, nice Look one. at this. Look. I've got a bacon bap on the way as well. But you are a you legend, guys. Mr. Erdl. A legend. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, cheers. cheers. I would cheers you. Nice cheers the empty cup. Oh. Oh, oh my I god. Just nailed it. That's so this, good. You're going to get it, gingerbread man. Oh my god. I mean, can it. Do you sell cans of oh. coke? They yeah. do, yeah. yeah. And beer. This is. What perfect end. This is definitely the perfect end, mate. Thanks, mate. You must have read my mind. Well, it's not quite a Starbucks, but it's pretty close. Oh. I think it's better, actually. Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, that is more like it. So, been a lot better now. Quick trip to the cafe there. Had that lovely gingerbread latte that Rich surprised me with, but I also had some cheesy chips and a big bit of cake. And it's so good to get some calories back in the system and I'm feeling a lot more alive now. A good solid 20 miles in the legs. So, well, just under 20 miles with 3,251 feet of elevation on some super challenging underfoot conditions. Lots of mud, lots of slipping around, a couple of trips, a couple of falls, uh, lots of sort of Cornish steps up and down. And, you know, the arc is a challenging race. So you have to get these tough miles in. So really happy with the last sort of five or six days of training. Really happy to sort of grind it out. You know, I had to dig in a bit towards the end there, but you know, they're the training runs that do you the most good, uh, give you a strong mind, you know, and obviously build up a bit of physical endurance as well. We've got a lot more planned when it comes to our um, short arc of attrition series. So we're going to be bringing you along on a nighttime training run soon as well. We're going to be doing a video discussing the kit that I'm going to be using when it comes to footwear, clothing, race vest, all that stuff. And we're also going to have a sort of deep dive into my nutrition and hydration for the race. And then obviously we're going to wrap up the arc series with a race day video and it's going to be an extravaganza of a race day video. Got to give a big shout out to the two brands that are sponsoring our short arc series. So Phoenix makes some great lighting products, whether it's running head torches or handheld torches, in fact. Uh, like I said, I've used their HM65RT for the last couple of years now, and it's become my go-to race head torch. Super bright, long burn time, very comfortable to wear, and it is so well manufactured, super durable. Uh, I'll be using it in the arc as well as one of their torches a backup torch and I'll be carrying one of their powerful hand torches which is really handy in a race like the Arc of Attrition and then there's obviously running apparel brand Saw we've got some wicked kit to training and to racing and I'm sure it'll keep me well protected while I'm out there in the middle of the winter running the Arc of Attrition so huge thanks guys you know it really is a massive help to the channel what I'll do is I'll link everything below if you want to check the two brands out in a bit more detail if you're watching this video series and you're preparing for the race then I hope training is going well and I hope you're looking forward to the big day you know you really won't be disappointed if this is your first experience of the arc of attrition you are in for a treat because mud crew do an incredible job with this event and you'll love it you'll love the support you'll get you'll love running the route because it is epic uh, we'll be back on the channel very soon guys but again thanks for watching thanks for supporting it really is appreciated and as always stay safe and keep on running. So John's suffering a bit. He's a bit tight in the lower back, in the hamstrings. It's been going on for a while. He's grinding it out. These are the runs that do it, mate. These are the runs that make you tough. These are the ones that make you dig in. These are the ones that contemplate. No. Like, you know? No. These are the ones that 
get you through them tough periods in a race, mate. Them easy training runs, they don't do nothing. It's these ones where you have to suffer. They're the best, honest. Honest they are. You may not feel it at the moment, but 